Hello everyone, this is Stefan from Lush and Salty Aquariums. I hope you're having a good day and a good week and a good life during these most challenging of times. I've said it before and I'll probably say it every time, keeping aquariums is good therapy for us every day, but especially during these challenging times. Let's get right to it. We're looking at my Fluval F-Series 15 gallon nano aquarium kit it comes with that terrific base which you have to build but it's not that difficult this is a high-end fluval setup and maybe costs around four or five hundred dollars for all the uh, technical stuff all the apparatus I've had this tank for a couple years now, basically since I moved to this residence, and I've been very, very happy with it, with uh, one or two exceptions, which I'll get to. But let's look at the inhabitants. It's kind of an uh, E-Rats group, E-Rats being a oddball vocabulary word for sort of um, a mixed jumble of, of fish and invertebrates and obviously as you can see plant life um, the plant life is a jungle aquarium that would be the aquascape although in its early inception it had a more formalized uh, scape the plants have since taken over and made it their own and while I do lots of trimming I haven't really gotten into it that much so that you can see that wonderful piece of bogwood which is mostly invisible at this point but it does add some great texture and obviously the wood itself provides all kinds of nooks and crannies for the creatures in this tank to uh, hide in and seek security. I'm begging your pardon for the reflection. I'll try to rectify that as we move along. Inside the aquarium, I have a menagerie of different tetra species. There you see neons. I have silver hatchet fish, which are jumpers. So there is a top, but I still find one hatchet fish a month that has found its way out of the feeding hole, I'm sorry to say. I have cherry shrimp in here. And while some of them are eaten by the tank, I'm sure, the tank peoples, or excuse me, the tank inhabitants. There's enough nooks and crannies and places to hide and reproduce that I have a consistent colony. Now, and there's a, a nice one right there. And uh, he or she is behaving without fear, even if a hatchet fish. Uh, there you see a green Kubatai rasbora. Uh, come on, show us your shimmer. Well, and uh, even if some of those happen upon these shrimp, they're too big really to fit into their mouth, so therefore they're safe. In the back, I have a large colony of ember tetras, although I'm not seeing them now, I will find you some. I have numerous Corydora species in here, panda quarries, uh, pygmy quarries and the long fin variety of the panda as well and they may have reproduced because I've seen smaller ones which I did not add I also have in this tank and there you can see a couple ember tetras looking beautiful and opalescent in the background. I also have some chili rasbora in here, a mono shrimp, and Siamese algae eaters, which have grown to monstrous sizes. If one comes out, it's ungodly and too big for this tank, but good luck trying to get him out or her. I think there's two or there's at least two, maybe three in here. And they do a pretty good job. I don't have conspicuous algae and you see the ground looks pretty good and that's excellent for a tank that's over two years old. I do water changes and I do 
siphon the gravel a little bit up front, but mostly it's the uh, janitorial crew in the tank that keeps this thing clean and fabulous. Um, the filter is a Fluval 106 canister, which is inside this lovely cabinet. And I think it does a terrific job and it's relatively easy to clean and maintain. The cabinet has that lovely um, satisfying click when you shut it. And you can see basically there's one of those large quarries that may or may not be reproducing the panda variety. Now the darker substrate means that they're going to have darker pale skin. So some people suggest uh, different substrates can change the overall color and tone of a quarry catfish or a panda. That has not been my experience. I find as they get older, they they tend to get duller in general, but I love them just the same. And like I said before, they may very well be reproducing in here. Excuse the rumble as I stand up. So now you see the top. I've made a makeshift protector to try and keep the hatchets from jumping out. I also have, believe it or not, one of my white platinum beta fish in here, which I had to house. He's in the back here, he comes out later and prowls the whole tank. He's in really good shape. And that's not a blemish on him, that's actually a cherry shrimp. And see these two, Hunter and Hunted, are getting along just fine. Obviously he's the biggest fish in the tank, so he should have no fears. He just likes it back there. And his fins are in great shape, so I don't think he's in any trouble. But when I sit in my chair, I basically uh, take in the whole tank and not specific parts of it. And I love the jungle effect and that's what we have going on here. I do want to formalize the fish inhabitants. I like a community tank, but there's something more attractive about having one or two schools of fish and then a cleanup crew at the bottom. Wonder what you guys would do in a situation like this. In any event, I hope this has been a neat look into one of my oldest and biggest of nano tanks. I beg your pardon for the production value. And as always, keep your hands in the tank.